Hello, my fellow Whovians. This is Alan, and welcome to part two of my review of The Greatest Show in the Galaxy, starring Sylvester McCoy as the Seventh Doctor. Now, uh, I wrapped up part one of my review, uh, giving my props to as many cast members in the story as I could, because I think, I think the cast members all give really good performance in this particular Doctor Who story. Uh, what else do I enjoy about uh, Greatest Show in the Galaxy? Uh, the look of the story. I think the look of, of uh, the story is great. I think the look of the circus, the psychic circus in the story is really good. That's basically the outside tent right there. Looks pretty cool. It looks even cooler on the inside. I love uh, all the circus tent sets. There's also a really cool set that we get to see at the end of the story where the Doctor enters uh, an alternate reality and he enters what basically resembles a miniaturized gladiator arena, uh, or so it seems. I mean, small enough that it could fit in a circus tent. It looks like a gladiator arena, but only in miniature. And that's the world of uh, the real villains in this story, the gods of Ragnarok. And let me tell you something about the gods of Ragnarok. They are cool. There's a photograph here on Wikipedia. However, for, I don't know why, but it only shows two of the three gods of Ragnarok. But look at them. Just take a look at the design of the gods of Ragnarok uh, from The Greatest Show in the Galaxy. They look awesome. I love their design. I love the look of their helmets and the glowing white eyes, their gray rock-colored robes. Uh, now, in the story, there's three of them, but obviously this picture only shows two. But uh, nonetheless, the gods of Ragnarok are terrific in the story. Oh, and by the way, the gods of Ragnarok, nothing to do with Ragnarok from uh, Thor, <laughs> from the uh, Marvel movie Thor Ragnarok. Now, this is a completely different Ragnarok. Let me make that perfectly clear. But the main three villains, the gods of Ragnarok, uh, they look superb. I love the design of their helmets and their robes. And uh, they really, truly look menacing. The glowing white eyes, I love them. They're great, memorable Doctor Who villains, that's for sure. I also got to give my props to Sylvester McCoy because there's this one sequence towards the end of, ep of episode four where there's an explosion that goes off right behind McCoy as he's walking out of the tent. He walks out of the tent and, and, and then all of a sudden, boom, big explosion right behind McCoy. He doesn't even flinch. He just keeps on walking. Wow, that's amazing. I got to give it up to Sylvester McCoy. That's another one of the reasons why I think his performance in this story is so good. Besides a great acting performance, the fact that he was able to walk out of that tent and, you know, that big, huge mother explosion goes boom right behind him and he doesn't even flinch. He doesn't go, ah! <laughs> he just keeps on walking when that sucker goes off right behind him. I mean, I got nothing but respect. Respect, 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 Sylvester McCoy. Um, I don't know how you managed to, uh, to walk away from that explosion without flinching, but uh, you did it. You did it, brother. Way to go, Sylvester McCoy. I'm also grateful that The, that, uh, the Greatest Show in the Galaxy uh, was completed because, according to Wikipedia, The Greatest Show in the Galaxy almost suffered the same fate as the legendary... Tom Baker's story, Shada, which was never finished. Although apparently it's now going to be finished in an animated version. But anyway, uh, as Shada from the Tom Baker era was never finished, The Greatest Show in the Galaxy was almost never finished because uh, while they were shooting it, uh, they discovered that there was uh, a big growth of, I guess, of asbestos in the BBC studios. There's quite a bit of asbestos and it needed to be cleaned out immediately. But it also meant that the, that the, the Doctor Who crew could not go into those studios and shoot the scenes that they needed to shoot for The Greatest Show in the Galaxy. So it turned out that uh, they got around the problem by simply erecting a tent, I think, in the parking lot of the BBC, something like that. And whatever scenes, whatever remaining scenes they needed to shoot in the studio for The Greatest Show in the Galaxy, they simply shot it in the tent. They're like this big white tent, which they also lit up with, with various colored lights. And they were able to get around that problem and shoot the final remaining scenes for the story in the tents rather than in the studio. And so, thank God, The Greatest Show in the Galaxy was finished. Just by the skin of its teeth, but nonetheless, they finished it. Thank God. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have lost a wonderful gem of a Doctor Who story. So... I'm so grateful that they got to finish this story. If I have any little nitpicks about The Greatest Show in the Galaxy, there are two of them. 
Uh, one of them involves uh, the character of the Ringmaster, played by Rico Ross. The rapping. Yes, that's right. In this story, the Ringmaster raps. Terribly. <laughs> He doesn't come out like a regular ringmaster and, you know, with, with the circus music. Dun, 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 you know, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the greatest show in the galaxy. Instead, he comes out and he does a rap. He raps and terribly. It's, it's, I, I don't know the exact words, but something like, <laughs> welcome all you've come to see the greatest show in the galaxy. <laughs> what? Who came up with this stupid idea to have the ringmaster rap? Now, you know, I've got nothing personal against uh, rap music. In fact, there's a little bit of rap music that I actually like. But I'm just saying that the ringmaster's rapping in this story is just atrocious. I don't understand for the life of me why they couldn't have had the ringmaster just come out in the story and just and just talk and do his announcements like a regular ringmaster you would see at any circus you know ladies and gentlemen boys and girls blah, blah, blah. why did they have to have him rap and rap terribly every single time the ringmaster did a rap i mean i'm cringing it's just terrible terrible rapping don't get me wrong stephen wyatt wrote a great script for this Doctor Who story, but if this was his idea to have the ringmaster rap, Stephen, shame on you. You wrote a great script. Overall, I really like your Doctor Who story very, very much, but having the ringmaster rap was a bad idea. It's one of the things that stops The Greatest Show in the Galaxy for me of being a four-star classic. Maybe, just maybe, if the ringmaster hadn't done that cringe-inducing rapping, I just might have given Greatest Show in the Galaxy the perfect four-star rating. But with the wrapping, it's a flawed gem. A wonderful gem, but a flawed gem. There's one other nitpick I have about The Greatest Show in the Galaxy, and that's uh, the death of one particular character in the story that really, really bummed me out. And especially because it basically amounts to uh, a suicide, uh, what happens to this character. And I felt so bad for, the, for this character, to see this character go out like that. Although... On the other hand, it's understandable as the character is very, very tormented and wants to be freed of the suffering that the character is experiencing. But it doesn't change the fact that the character's death is very, very sad. And it is, for all intents and purposes, a suicide. And it's just really, really sad. And it's a bummer. And it also moves the story down an itty bitty notch for me in quality. Perhaps if the character had survived and the ringmaster hadn't done the rapping, then no doubt in my mind I would have given Greatest Show in the Galaxy the perfect four star rating. Other than those two little nitpicks, this is a terrific Doctor Who story. And when I look back upon Sylvester McCoy's era, this is the story of Sylvester McCoy's era that I like the most. It's not perfect. I wish I could give it four stars, four out of four. Can't quite do it because of a couple of nitpicks, but no doubt in my mind, The Greatest Show in the Galaxy is my favorite Sylvester McCoy story from Doctor Who. And on a scale of one to four stars, I will give The Greatest Show in the Galaxy three and a half out of four stars. Three and a half out of four stars. The Greatest Show in the Galaxy, my favorite Sylvester McCoy story from Doctor Who. I love it. And that's my review of The Greatest Show in the Galaxy. McCoy has only one season left as the Doctor. And the classic Doctor Who series has only one season left as well. I'm actually nearing the finish line in reviewing the classic Doctor Who series. I can't believe it. One season left, four stories left. And next time on Doctor Who Review, Sylvester McCoy returns for his third and final season as the Doctor in the story... Battlefield, which I'm happy to say also features the return of the one and only Nicholas Courtney as Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart. It's kind of a sword and sorcery story, but the Brigadier is on board for the ride and um, looking forward to watching it again. It's been a while since I've seen it. Battlefield, next time on Doctor Who Review. This is Alan. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time on Doctor Who Review as I begin reviewing the final season of the classic Doctor Who series, as well as the final season for Sylvester McCoy with 
Battlefield. See you then.